tutorial for electrical supply system. This is for building science and services too. Okay, so in this tutorial, they will have about six questions and one calculation. So for the first question, it's asking you to explain what is the concept of electric distribution from the system to the consumer. So the concept is here, which you can find in your from your lecture note. So how does electricity come from? First off, they are generated by a through uh, electric power station through the conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy in a case such as a dam the dam collect the water at a jungle or a very far away area or mountain and then with the water pressure they will drive the uh, mechanical energy into an electrical energy and then after leaving the generator the electricity will pass to a trap, a step up transformer where the voltage is boosted up to 132 kilovolt and 2275 kilovolt and 400 kilovolt and before they are passed on to the national grid. So this national grid is the system to trans is a transmission system which links all the main power station in Malaysia. Then from this main power system. The voltage transmission is then be, to be lowered down in, at, uh, to 33 kilovolts or 11 kilovolts using a step down transformer at a distribution substation. So the power is uh, generated from the electric power station. And then before leaving this station, <coughs> the electricity, they are, they are to be stepped up they are to be increased using a step-up transformer. So then you have a 302 kilovolts or 275 and 400 kilovolts. So they will step it up in stages. And then when it reach 400 kilovolts, then this electricity will be transferred to the main power station. Then from this main power station, then the electricity will then be stepped down again into 33 or 11 kilovolts and then they are distributed to the distribution substation so this one uh, from this uh, from this national uh, from the electric power station to the main power station this will be the electricity will be traveling through a very very far distance so this main power station will be located, let's say for example, in a case this is in KL, whereas the electric generator may be in another state where they are trying to power up the, where they are able to generate the electricity. So this national grid system might span for very, very long span, instance of maybe 200 to 300 kilometers to get the electricity from the area they generated it from to the city that we live in. Then from this main power station, this is where the electricity is stored. And then as required, the, the electricity will be transferred to the distribution substation. And then it will be low now and transferred to the distribution substation. And then from this distribution substation, then we have our, uh, our local trans, uh, distribution, distributor. So from this local distribution substation, this they are further reduced. The voltage is further reduced to 415 volt either in either uh, using in three phase or is it a single phase? So it can be two depending on the area that you have. So this is the concept on how the electrical electricity distribution works. So you will see this is a picture for it. You have your power station. So this will be where the electricity is generated. It will be in a very, very far location, not within near city. And then they will be set up before they leave the station. They will have to step up and increase the voltage and they will travel. So if, as you can see in this figure, there will be about five to indicate like the electricity have to travel a very long distance to us 
to the city. So when it reach a step down transformer, either you supply it to our electric train or you can further step it down here. So this, uh, there will be two transformer here where the electricity can be stored and then they are to either distribute it to the area that the area industry which needs the electricity. In here and here, they will be further step down to all the consumer. So this one will be in a very, very far away place at the countryside. And then all these step down transformer, they will be near the city or the area where the electricity is needed. Then there will be this a uh, lot of pylon over here. Lah. Okay, so that's it for the question one. So for question two, this is a calculation question. It is asking you to calculate the power wasted as internal energy in a cable when 15 kilowatts is transmitted through a cable having a resistance of 0.8 ohm at 204 volt and 275 kilovolt. So you know that the ohm, uh, the resistance is 0 0.8 ohm and the load transmitted is 15 kilowatt from the given info. So you just use the P equals to VI. So this is the formula. You put in the value, you'll get I equals to 62.5 M. Then similarly, you can either, you can, you put, you can find the power wasted with, with the info that you have, which is the current that you have using P equals to I square R. And then you'll get that the power wasted is 3.125. So then the next part is power wasted as internal energy at 275 kilovolts. So similarly, you have to repeat the step one again, but instead of 240 volt, you're using 275 kilovolt. And then you'll get this value, which is 0 0.00238 watts. Okay, then it's asking you why electricity is transmitted at high, very high voltage, such as up to 400 in the national grid system in Malaysia. So, uh, you are, we are transmitting the voltage at a very high, we are transmitting the electricity at a very high voltage to minimize or reduce power loss during transmission. Also, another thing is, uh, if you look at the electrical node, you also have to take note that we are actually transferring the voltage at a very high volt because we want to reduce the amount of current being transmitted on the power supply, on the power grid. So if you are able to reduce the grid system, you do not have so much current going through the cable. One thing you know that if your current is very high, you need a very big cable. You think of it as a case like a water pipe. But in the case where the current is very low, you do not have to size your beam, uh, your cable so big. So when the cable, when you do not need such a big cable size, you are actually re reducing the cost. That's also one of the reasons why you want to transmit the electricity at a very high voltage. So you can either uh, transfer it at 132, 275 or 400 kilovolt, depending on how much electricity you are generated. So obviously if you're generating a lot of electricity, you want to go for a very high kilovolt transfer. So remember here is to say you are to reduce the power loss. Another thing is you have to reduce the costing because if you have a low voltage, then you have a very high current. When you have a very high current, you, you need to size your cable big. If not, it will incur a lot of cost to size it accordingly to, to, efficient, to efficiently transfer the current. You will not be able, because I link this uh, current this electricity to water pipe, you will not be, think of this way, you will not be able to transfer a lot of water if your pipe size is small. So that's the idea behind why you want to size it bigger. If, but in this case, you want to increase your voltage, then your current will be low. So you do not have to size your uh, cable so big to accommodate for your current. Okay, for the third question, is to illustrate the supply of electricity to consumer. So this is how uh, electricity is distributed to us consumer. 
you have a meter and a service fuse. So this is by TMB. And then you start off with a cable. This is a service fuse. Is, uh, when the electric current is too high, then it will trip, it will burn off the fuse. So this is a safety measure. And then you have a meter. So this meter will measure how much electricity is flowing into the home. So this part is under TMB, which is uh which is also below ground. That's why uh as a as an additional safety measure, so we do not go and tamper with it. Uh, except for this meter, meter will be outside, will be above ground to to find out the how much electricity is being used. And then you'll be have after that all of this will be inside your house. You have a circuit breaker and a, di a distribution box. So this is open in one box. If you can find it in your house, although the image is a bit small. So this is your DB box, the so-called distribution box. Inside this distribution box, there will be a circuit breaker or a, a fuse, the electric circuit breaker. So this is how electricity is supplied to the consumer. Okay, next question is asking, asking you to sketch a typical ring and radial electric circuit in a domestic building. So uh, this is actually your electric wiring. A typical ring and radial electric circuit. So let's move to the next picture. So this is how it is like. You have your consumer control unit and then you have your wire. This is your uh, three, your live wire, your neutral wire and your off wire. You have three wire and then you have your wall circuit. So this is your wall circuit for you to plug in your appliances to use the electricity. Okay, so this is additional additional pictures. This is also the same. So this is a radial circuit. A radial circuit is a, a additional circuit from the ring circuit. So a ring circuit is the main circuit in your house, the wiring. So a radial circuit is in place when you have a uh, in an area where you have where you use a higher voltage appliances such as in your kitchen so uh let's go to the previous so this is the ring circuit is where you have all around your house and then you have another set of circuit sub, uh, which is leashed off from here this will be your another radial electric circuit so this Radial electric circuit will mostly be at the kitchen or the place where you use a higher amount of electricity. Okay, so hope this is clear for you. What is a ring and radial and what's the difference? So they are all a ring is a wiring system for your whole house, and then a radial is a branch off from this green circuit for uh for the kitchen area, which uh for the kitchen area. So you want to have, uh, if you can see here, if you can see here, you want to have, this will be your ring and this will be a ra your radial circuit. You want to have a fuse here so that in case when you're powering anything high voltage and it's overdrawing to protect, uh, to protect the appliances of the, this socket from blowing up, the fuse will blow up. That's the reason why you have a fuse over here. Okay, so this is it for the question four. For question five, so it's asking you to show the construction of an armored cable and why is it preferred over other type of cable and in underground installation. So uh, from the lecture notes, you can find that an armored cable have a copper inside at the most deep end, uh, the most deep of the wire, then this is where electricity is being conducted. Then you have a uh, PVC, this is uh, insulation, and then this is a uh, protection against damages, and then you have another uh, PVC outer shaft. So there's a lot of protection to protect this cable from any damages. If you can see here, this is the actual cross section design of the armored cable. 
Okay, so here this is the the properties of each of the different different item inside the armored cable. What's the conductor is a solid or stranded copper, and you have an insulation which is either the polyethylene, and then circuit identification should be insulated with red or black, and then you have a filler. Then you have your inner shelf, you have your armor to protect from any physical damage, and you have your core covering, and then you have your outer shelf. So there's a lot of protection going into protecting this cable because we are going to lay it underground and we are going to lay it for a very, very long distance. This is to ensure that the cable isn't easily damaged and there will be disruption to your consumer. So why is it more preferred using an armor cable rather than, than a normal cable? So with an armor cable, you um, it's more tolerant to overheating, it's robust and strong, resistant to moisture, so high electric strain, mechanical strain, high aging resistant, environment stress resistant, anti-chemical corrosion, and longer service period. So once you lay this cable, you expect it to last at least 100 years. That's the idea behind doing a work and you're burying it underground, you do not want to just simply uh, every five years to 10 years, you're digging up the cable again to replace the cable. So that's the idea of why we, why armored cable is used underground to transfer electricity. Okay, so this is the last question. So with the aid of a diagram, describe how a ring main system of electric distribution is installed in a large site. So uh, previously for question four, the ring main circuit is installed in a house. So this is wiring. So instead of wiring, you are taking this concept and putting it to commercialize usage, which is you are distributing electricity, not on a small scale, but you are distributing electricity on a large scale from building to building. So this building will be like our appliances in our house. So you will have something like this. You are, this will be something like your DB box, which is a substation. And you have one wire connecting each houses or each socket. So this is how a ring system looks like. You have only a single wire. There will not be any multiple wire coming out from the substation. There will only be a single wire working as a ring. That's why it's called ring main system to connect each of these houses. Okay, so you can read this. You can find this information on your site. And then one thing is, uh, is the advantage is each building and individual section may be isolated without switching off the entire installation. So this is one thing good about the system. And then you're able to reduce the voltage drop. And then because you are building the system based on the area, you can reduce the cost by sizing the cable accordingly. Because you're gonna lay the cable underground. So it's to make everything look nice, everything can be calculated. And once it's calculated and the correct appropriate size is uh, gotten, obtained, then we can cut the cost by planting it, planting the correct size means we do not oversize the cable. We do not give a cable which can transmit five kilovolt, but we want to size the cable which is just appropriate for this transmission in the area, in the large size. Okay, so this is it for tutorial four. So I hope you guys understand it well.